In this video, we're going to use tools like MetaMask, React, Solidity, EtherJS, and Hardhat to build our Web 3.0 decentralized application. We're going to first build our Solidity contract using Hardhat. Then we're going to write our first smart contract in Solidity. And then we're going to compile that. And then we're going to talk about how we can be able to test our smart contract using unit testing. And then we're going to set up our React application and connect it with our smart contract. Then we're also going to deploy our Solidity code and test it with our MetaMask. Lastly, we're going to summarize everything that we have inside of our project and the code is in the description of the video. So feel free to download it and play around. Also, the timestamp of this video is also in the description. So feel free to jump to any section you like. If that sounds interesting, let's get started. OK, so here you can see we have a empty repository called Dab Demo. And inside of our code repository, I create a folder called Contract, which is a folder where we're going to store all of our smart contracts. And what we're going to do is we're going to CD into Contract and then we're going to set up our package. So we're going to say MP PM init Y and we have our package.json. So then what we're going to do is we're going to install hard hat as our dependency and, and we have that installed inside of our dev dependencies inside of our package.json. And then what we're going to do is inside of our contract folder, we're going to bootstrap our hard hat project. So we're going to type in npx hard hat init and this will ask a series of questions and we're just going to choose using a TypeScript project. And then it's asking about the root directory and it's also asking if we want to add a git ignore, we're going to say yes. And it's also asking if we want to install this project dependency with npm, we're going to say yes. And then this is also going to install the hard hat toolbox. And then here you can see after it's finished and we have everything inside of our contract folder. Okay, so here you can see inside of our contract folder, we have many folders. So we have our contracts folder where we're going to store all of our smart contracts. And then we have our ignition, which is going to be our deployment file. And then we have our test folder where we're going to write tests. So here inside of our contracts folder, you can see we have our first smart contract and this is going to be the lock contract. And here you can see the prettier is complaining and we're just going to do command dot, which we're going to change the workspace version. We're going to use the 0.8.24 for our prettier. And if we're going to configure that, so we're going to say configure using prettier and configure using prettier. And then to do that, we're just going to do npm install save dependency prettier. And this, and this should basically set the error away. And of course, if you're new to Solidity, I have a video on my YouTube channel called Solidity Tutorial. So please check it out. OK, so now let's take a look at our contract lock. So here inside of our contract, we have two parameters. So one is the unlock time in integer and the other one is owner, which in address. And here inside, you can see we also have create a event, which is called withdraw, which basically takes a amount and when so time. And here you can see we also have a constructor which takes a unlock time and check to see if the current time is less than the unlock time, right? Because we want to set the unlock time to be the, to be in the future. So then what we're going to do is we set the unlock time and we set the owner. Then inside of our withdraw function, when the user triggers the withdraw function, we first check two things. So we check to see if the current time is greater than or equal to the unlock time. If not, then we're going to throw a message called you cannot withdraw yet. And then we check to see if the sender is actually the owner of this fund. And if they're not the owner, then we're going to say that you're not the owner. So we're not going to give them the permission to withdraw the fund. And here you can see we also emit which basically emit a event which we have here called withdraw and then we set the amount as well as when so we basically try to uh, publish this event to any services that subscribe to our application or to our contract and what's going to happen then is we're going to actually uh, transfer this fund to the owner who uh, who owns this fund so you can see owner.transfer and we basically say that this dot balance which is this balance that we're going to transfer to this owner all right so we can also be able to compile our hard hat contracts by using the npx hard hat compile. So if we were to compile this, this will basically generate the artifacts and the cache. And here you can see inside of our artifacts, we have our lock.json inside of our lock.soul. And inside of our API, which stands for application binary interface, which is similar to an API, which has the inputs, the name, and the type. And here you can see one of our input is the constructors. And you can see it has an input, which is the unlock time, and which is the same as here. And you can also see that the consumer can be able to access the withdrawal event as well as the owner. So the owner is this one right here. And then they can also be able to access the unlock time, which you can see we can also be able to access the withdrawal function. All right, so let's take a look at how we can be able to test inside of our contract. So here on the left, you can see we have a lock.ts, which is inside of our contract slash test folder. On the right, you can see we have our lock smart contract. So what's going to happen is that we're trying to test this contract by basically uh, going through 
some tests. For example, we're going to test the deployment. We're going to test the withdrawal. And inside of the withdrawals, we're going to test the validation, the events, and transfers. And you can see here that up here, we have a function called deploy one year lock fixture. Now, what this does is that we basically trying to run this setup once, and this will snapshot the state so that every time when we run a test, it will reset to that snapshot in every test. So basically what this function does is that we define some expected values, right? So for example, we define the locked amount, which is one GUI, and then we also define the locked unlock time time. So we're trying to unlock in one year for our test. And here you can see we also define our owners. And of course, there are many accounts inside of our Git signers. So we're basically trying to select the first one as the owner and the second one as the other accounts. And then we basically just get the contract and then we deploy this contract. So what this does is that this is going to be the uh, constructor value. So it takes the property of unlock time. So in this case, we're passing the unlock time, which is one year from now. And then we basically set the how much amount that we want to lock in. So in this case, we're for this contract, the value balance is going to be this one. It's going to be one way. And then we're basically saying that this is the lock, which is our contract. So we're going to use that as our expected value. And here you can see the first test we have is deployment. So there's a couple of things. So we are basically uh, trying to run our load fixture, right? And then we get our lock and then we get our unlock time, which have to see uh, if the current unlock time. So it says here, set the right unlock time. So we check the unlock time, which is this property is equal to the unlock time. And we also check the owner and we also check the current contract balance is equal to the locked amount. We also check to see if the unlock time is actually less than the block time. If that's the case, then the then the time that we it passed in is incorrect. So what we're doing here is we're using the time dot latest and then we're getting the contract and then we're trying to lock at this time. In this case, um, this happened before when we try to get the contract. So what's going to happen is that this time is going to be before um, the block dot timestamp. So this is going to give us the unlock time should be in the future error. So we're checking the specific error message here. And here's another example. So you can see here we're trying to revert the right error if called too soon. So we're basically trying to get our lock, which is our contract. And then we're trying to call the withdrawal function. And of course, um, the time is one year from when it's created. So in this case, uh, you will get an error called you can't withdraw yet, which is exactly the same as this, right? And we're just checking to see if we're getting the same error message. And here you can see we're trying to use reverted with to check another error message. We're getting the lock and then we increase the time. So we can, again, we can be able to increase the time in hard, hard hat network. And you can see we're trying to increase it to the unlock time so that it bypassed the first uh, check. And then the second check, we're going to see if it's the actual owner. In this case, lock.connect with the other account. And we're trying to withdraw. In this case, it won't because the owner is not the same. So it will give us the you aren't, you aren't the owner. So we're basically checking the message if that's correct. And then the last one here, you can see we have should, shouldn't fail if the unlock time has arrived and owner calls it, which basically means that we're going to increase the time. We're going to make sure to bypass the first check and also bypass the second check since currently we are the owner and we can use the not property to be able to check to see if it's not reverted at all. And of course, we can also be able to check events since here you can see we emit an event and we can basically do that by using the dot emit here basically we just pass in the contract as the first param and the second param is the event name which is the withdraw with a capital w and then you can see we can also check the arguments since the time is not something that we want to check so we can put in any value here since it doesn't matter but we can just check the argument locked amount in this case the locked amount should be accurate as the same as what we expected lastly we are trying to check to see if the fund is successfully withdrawn first we are trying to increase the time to the unlock time then we do the lock dot withdraw and then we check to see if the fund is actually withdraw from the contract to the owner by basically using the change ether balance method. And this change ether balance method takes two things or take model things, but we're basically passing the accounts and the balances. And this basically corresponds to the, each other. So the owner, we're checking to see if the balance has increased to this lock amount and the lock balance or the lock contract has been decreased this amount balance. So if we were to run our test, we simply type in npx hard hat test. And if we were to run this, you can see there are a total of nine tests and they're all passing. And we can also be able to check the test coverage by typing npx hard hat coverage. And this will run the full coverage of our test. And you can see that we're currently 100% covered.
All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to build our React client application so to connect with our smart contract. So I already have the contract still running and basically inside of the root folder, the app demo, we're just going to run npx create React app, which in this case, we're going to create a React application and we're going to name it called client. So let's create this. All right, so this is our client application, which is already created. Then what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can be able to run it. So CD into clients and npm start, which which will start our React application. And if we go to our local host 3000, you can see that we have our React application running. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna commit all those changes into our Git repository. So I already created a repository for this on GitHub, so link is down below. But here right now you can see we ha have already created the client and the contract. Obviously we haven't connect those two together yet, but we're gonna do that later. But for now, we're just gonna commit this initial state. And we're just gonna say initial smart contract and client application setup. So we're going to commit this we're just gonna do a push. All right, awesome. So we just pushed our latest changes to our Git repository. And if we were to open our repository, you can see that we have our latest change that we just pushed. All right, so then what I did here is I removed a couple things inside of our React applications. So here inside of our source control, as you can see, I removed the unused stylings as well as the tests, as well as the report web vitals. And then basically what I changed is the app.js and changed it to just saying hello. And then the index.js, here, I basically just render the basic app component. And then if we were to open our terminal, you can see that it has been compiled successful and is ready to add new things. All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna install ether. So we're gonna cut the terminal and then we're just gonna do npm install save ethers. And we're gonna install this package inside of our application. All right, so so far we have already set up our Solidity and our React application. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you how we can be able to connect our React application with our Solidity smart contract. And of course, I'm also going to add additional features to this existing smart contract, like depositing funds. And we can be able to see that after we deposit the fund, we can see the balance have reflected on that change. All right, so here you can see right now I'm on my application and the current contract balance is 6.0 ETH. And then let's say if I want to deposit some fund, let's say if I want to deposit 2 ETH, and then I'm expecting the number to change. So let's say if I were to enter the deposit funds. All right, so then I click on confirm. And then if I were to refresh, you can see the number has been changed. And of course, other than the deposit funds, we also can be able to withdraw funds and also be able to get the current account connected. And after, let's say, if the user decide to log out of the MetaMask, you can see that our React app is also reflected on this change. And if user wants to connect to our Web3 wallet, and then it will prompt the user to log in to their MetaMask. All right, so that's basically a snapshot of what we're going to build. So if that sounds interesting, let's continue building. All right, so after we install ethers i also went ahead and installed react toastify as well and then i also add a couple things inside of our react component and also our contract so let's go over that so here you can see inside of our app.js which is our main component and you can see that i have added a couple things so first you can see i have a used effect which will basically run once inside of our application to fetch the current account it will basically trigger the metamask pop-up so that user can be able to log in and select the account and then then what we're going to do is we will have a listener that listens to the account change. Let's say the uh, the user open the MetaMask and decide to lock the account or log out, then we'll basically set the account to be null. And then inside here, we will check to see if the account, if we don't have account, then we will have the connect wallet button, which will display on the page. If the user has the account, then we'll basically display the info and also the actions. And just give you an idea what it looks like. So right now you can see if user decide to log out, for example, click on the log meta. And here you can see this is what it looks like. So we have the connect web three wallet, which is basically our connect wallet button. And if user decide to log in, for example, then they can be able to log into this account. And you can see that this is what it displays if the user logged in. And then let's go into detail about what these things does. So here, let's say, so let's take a look at the request account. So then what I did here is I basically specify the provider, signer, and the contract. So the provider will basically allow us to read and write on our blockchain network. And then the signer is basically the current user. And then here, basically, I call the initialize function, which will basically initialize the provider, signer, and also the contract. And then this is the contract, which here I specify the contract address and also the lock ABI, which is what we have inside of our artifacts. And we also pass in the signer for our contract as well. And then inside of our request accounts method, you can see first we're getting the list of accounts that the current user in has inside of our inside of their MetaMask. And then we're going to get the first one. So obviously, 
basically currently right now we only have just one test account so we're just going to get the first one for now and then we also have the get contract balance so that's what so that's what you see here inside of here which we're basically trying to get the balance by passing the contract address and then we're using the format ether to format the balance way to a eth the other action that we can do is deposit fund so we can be able to call the deposit fund which is what we have here deposit fund we enter the amount which is the variables here and then we can be able to call the deposit function for our contract and this contract is our lock contract so we can call the deposit function and pass in the value and this simply and this wait function will simply just wait until this action is complete then we will proceed further and then here we also calling the withdraw function from the contract so if we look at the lock contract there is a withdraw function which will withdraw balance and then here is basically our connect wallet button so here when user click on the connect it will trigger the connect button which we will call the request account so that they can be able to log in and then this is the contract actions so there are two actions one is the handle deposit which will basically call the deposit function and then the other one is basically handle the withdraw which will call the withdraw fund function and of course we also have a toast alert which will trigger if there is an error and we also have our contract info to display the balance and the connected account that we're going to use. And lastly, I also made a change inside of our lock contract. Here, this method will try to deposit the fund to our lock contract. And of course, I also made a change inside of our contract readme as well. So here, this is basically our test. And then after you made a change, like we did here for our lock lock soul, we will just run the npx hard hat compile. Since we're adding a new function, so we need to make sure that we update our ABI. And then what we do is we will start our node so we run npx hardhat node and then what i did here is i also add a parameters inside of our initiation so here you can see initiation folder there is a parameters.json and which has the unlock time and the unlock amount and if we were to look at our modules you can see that this is what we define so we have defined the unlock time and then the lock amount so that is what we're going to do we're going to use the parameters when we're going to deploy our smart contract so then when we try to deploy it we specify that we're going to use the parameters that define inside of the JSON file. And then once we've done that, we're going to copy the artifacts uh, to our client's lock ABI JSON. And we're also going to copy the deployed address and then paste it, update it inside of our constants.js, constants.js, which is inside of here, which updated here. And then what you can do is you install MetaMask, which is a Firefox extension. And then once you installed, you can be able to log in and create and set up your account with MetaMask. Then what you're going to do is you're going to add a network. We're going to add a network manually. We're going to specify that we have a new RPC URL, which is going to be our local host URL. So since I already have this set up, what you can do is you add the network and then the currency symbol can be anything. So for testing purpose, we can just use ETH. Once you have this network set up, what you can do is you can also click here to add the account. And then we just provide the private key for one of the test account inside of our terminal. And then we can be able to get started. Then we're going to start our React application. And then as you can see right now, inside of our React application, I have already logged in. And then if I want to deposit some fund, for example, I want to deposit 10 ETH, I can be able to see that this will be changed and it will set confirm. And if I were to refresh, you can see the current balance of the contract is 10 ETH. And I can also be able to withdraw fund. So since right now it's already past the lock, the lock time so if i click on the withdraw fund and as you can see i'm triggering the withdraw function all right to summarize this section what we did here is we connect our smart contract with our client application to achieve the following feature like deposit fund withdraw fund as well as display contract information on our page and of course if you're going to play around with this make sure to not forget to copy the lock.js api list to the client lock api json as well as update the deployed address to the constants js file